Welcome back, Sydney Diener families. I hope you've been enjoying your summer and enjoying the book that we've been sharing together. Um, before we start our chapters today, let's begin by quickly reviewing chapters four and five. Um, if you remember, Bean decided she was gonna try and set the record for being the youngest person to break um, glass with her voice. She tried to borrow a glass octopus from her sister's room, but that didn't work out so well. So then she and Ivy ended up digging in the backyard and that's where we left them off. So today we're gonna see what happens as they continue to do that. One thing that good readers do is they make connections. This means while they read, good readers are thinking about things that it reminds them of, whether it's from their own life, whether it's other books they've read, movies, they're always using those things that they know to help them understand the book better. So today, while we read our two chapters, I want you to think if you've ever done anything like Ivy and Bean, or if there's other parts of the chapters that remind you of a book you've read, a movie you've seen, a TV show, um, anything that can help you understand the book better. Two words that I want you to listen for today, one of them is gonna be the word burrowing, and this can mean to dig. Some other words can, uh, that mean the same thing are tunnel, excavate, and bore. And if you see here, we have some little prairie dogs that are burrowing, uh, making their hole. Another word that you're gonna hear is the word glumly, which can mean sadly. Other words are moody, sulky, and melancholy. And if you look, this child looks a little glum that they're having to eat their vegetables. He does not look too excited about it. So those are gonna be two words that show up in our story today. All right, we've got two chapters and we're gonna go ahead and jump into those. Be thinking of things that it reminds you of and uh, listen for our words, burrowing and glumly. Chapter six, Ivy Beanosaur. They dug for half an hour without finding any more bones. Bean was on the edge of giving up. She figured that one bone was a lot more than most people found. But then she thought of Mary Anning chip, chip, chipping for a year. She didn't want to be wimpier than Mary Anning or Ivy. So she dug and dug. Ivy's nose was running and she had mud all over her. Also, her feet had gone to sleep from being kneeled on but she didn't give up either. She combed through each new load of dirt with her fingers, feeling for bones. She found a lot of rocks. She found a marble. She found a piece of blue plastic. Then her fingers, burrowing into the mud like worms, plucked out another bone. This one was shorter and thicker, but it was definitely a bone. I got another one, she called. Bean dropped down beside her and looked at the gray-brown lump. We rock, she said. No, we fossil, giggled Ivy. She dusted the bone carefully and put it next to the first one. We can put them together later, she said. How do you put them together if you don't know which dinosaur it is, asked Bean. It's like a puzzle, I think. You look for pieces that fit together, said Ivy. We can look in dinosaur books too, so it's a lot easier for us than for Mary Anning. She didn't have any pictures to look at, but she remembered. Mary Anning found the whole ichthyosaur, so she didn't need to put it together. It's sort of cheating to find the whole thing, said Bean. Oh man, here's a big one. She fished around in the dirt and pulled out a thick, heavy bone. It was a very serious looking bone. Bean held it up. It reached from her hand to her elbow. She whistled. This is no little cute dinosaur. This is a big, scary dinosaur. What if that's just its little finger, said Ivy dreamily. Monstrosaur, said Bean. Ivy Beanosaur, said Ivy. You're supposed to name them after the person who discovered them. Bean giggled. Then her shovel hit something hard. Another bone appeared. This one's smooth and round. Whoa, Nellie, cried Bean. I think I got a piece of its skull. A few minutes later, Bean found another small bone. Ivy found two more, one big, the other medium. There was no doubt about it. The backyard had been swarming with dinosaurs. You know, Ivy said, holding up her ninth bone. They didn't even call out when they found them now. Mary Anning was 12 when she found her ichthyosaur. We're only seven. We're probably the youngest paleontologist in the world. Bean stopped digging and leaned on her shovel. The youngest paleontologist in the world? Ivy, 
You know what that means. Huh? It means we're record breakers. Ivy stopped rubbing dirt. She and Bean grinned at each other. Youngest paleontologist in the world, said Ivy. That's way better than spoons. By the time Ivy had to go home, the girls had found 17 bones. They were all different sizes, but they were clearly from the same dinosaur because they were all the same shade of grayish brown. Bean's father called her in for dinner. Bean washed off most of the dirt and sat down at the dining room table. She smiled, thinking about the dinosaur skeleton she and Ivy were going to build. They were totally awesome. They would probably be on TV. Her parents would have to let her watch TV if she was on it. Bean noticed that Nancy was sneering at her. She was still mad about the octopus. If I ever catch you looking at one of my glass animals again, you'll be sorry, Nancy hissed while their father served up their pasta. What am I supposed to do? Put a blindfold on when I go into your room? You're not supposed to go into my room, said Nancy, because it's my room. Daddy, can I get a lock on my door? No, said Dad, bringing in their bowls. Bean stared at her pasta. It looked funny, but she decided not to say so. This pasta looks weird, said Nancy. That's what I thought, but I didn't say it, said Bean. Mom says if you can't say something nice about your food, you shouldn't say anything at all. Nancy lifted one eyebrow and said, Little children who break dishes, steal other people's stuff, and screech their brains out have no right to talk about what other people do. How about if we don't talk at all for a little while, suggested Dad. Fine with me, said Nancy. Me too, said Bean. So she didn't tell them anything about the amazing dinosaur find in the backyard. Serves them right, she thought. I'll be the youngest paleontologist in the world, and they won't even know it. Chapter 7, Believe It or Not Breaking the world record is harder than it looks, said Emma the next day at recess. The second graders who had gathered around the amazing book of world records the day before were huddled under the play structure again, without the book. I could get two spoons stuck on my cheeks no problem, Emma went on, and for a second I got three, but that's all. I wish the book said how that kid did it. Did you try your nose? asked Drew. Sure, I tried my nose, Emma said. It slid right off. Maybe he has a very sticky face, said Ivy. Maybe he even put something on his face to make it sticky. Maybe, said Emma, but forget it. I'm tired of trying to put spoons on my face. There was a silence. Bean didn't want to be a braggy kid. Everyone hates braggy kids. She would wait to tell about the dinosaur bones until someone else told about breaking a record. How'd the cartwheels go? She asked Zuzu. Super great, said Zuzu. You did it? Asked Ivy. A hundred and eleven cartwheels? Everyone looked impressed. Wow, that's great. Are you going to be in the book? Zuzu pulled the zipper on her jacket down and up. I didn't do 111 cartwheels. I did 32. She looked around at the faces watching her. That's a lot. I set the record for Emerson School for sure. There was a short silence while everyone thought about that. Then Bean said, did you fall down or what? I crashed into the fence, said Zuzu. Got a bunch of splinters. She held up her knee. It looked like she had pepper under her skin. Ouch, said Ivy. She hated splinters. If my backyard was a mile long, I bet I could have done it, said Zuzu. Eric's not at school today, said Vanessa. I wonder if he ate 500 M&Ms. He didn't, said Dusit. He ate 112 and then he threw up. But 112 is hardly anything. He didn't chew, said Dusit. He just poured them down his throat. Yuck, said Emma. That's gross. His mom is really mad, said Dusit glumly. She took the rest of his money away. What about you, Bean? asked Vanessa. Did you get all those straws in your mouth? Straws? Bean had almost forgotten the straws. Oh, no, but Ivy and I broke another record. How many did you get in? asked Zuzu. What? Oh, 44, but guys, said Bean. Ivy and I broke another record yesterday afternoon. She stopped and waited. Well, said Vanessa, what record? We became the youngest paleontologist in the world. There was a little pause. What's a paleontologist, asked Drew. A person who digs up dinosaur bones, said Bean, and that's what we did. 
We dug 17 dinosaur bones out of my backyard yesterday, and today we're going to get more. And then we're going to put them together and make a dinosaur skeleton. Nobody said anything. Isn't that cool? said Bean. What was the matter with them? You did not, said Doucette finally. We did too, cried Bean. Seventeen dinosaur bones. No way, said Emma. Yes way, said Bean firmly. Zuzu and Emma gave each other a look. Bean felt her face get hot. People don't just find dinosaur bones, said Vanessa in a grown-up voice. Dinosaur bones aren't just lying around. Sometimes they are, said Ivy. That's how Mary Anning found them. Until yesterday, Mary Anning was the youngest paleontologist in the world, said Bean, trying again. Now, Ivy and I are. You can't just say you broke a record and get in the book, said Vanessa. You have to prove it. We can prove it, said Ivy. Her face was getting a little pink, too. We have the bones. How do we know that they're not chicken bones you stuck in the ground yourself, Vanessa said. They're not chicken bones. They're big. You can come over and see them if you don't believe us, said Bean. Okay, said Vanessa. I will. In fact, you can all come over, said Bean. I get you all over for a dinosaur bone viewing. So there. Fine. When, said Emma. You can come this afternoon, Bean decided. But don't come early, because Ivy and I have paleontology to do. You'd better come and see them today, said Ivy. When they're in the museum, you'll have to... When they're in the museum, you'll have to pay. Come on, Bean. They turned their backs on the play structure and walked toward the classroom. All right. So that's our two chapters for today. I wonder if you have any connections to anything we've read. Um, I hope you're looking forward to see what happens when um, Ivy and Bean's classmates come to her house to see the bones. And we will pick up our story next week. Thanks, guys.